is she crazy for having love in her heart and looking after an animal and yet women right. have been brandished with this crazy cat lady it's really lovely to be surrounded by creative people yeah and then I find out that new high speed train that goes up is known as the vomit comet because it's <laughs> so quick and there's me like thinking oh my Whoa. god Dawn, your fabulous book, Cat Lady, is out today. Yes. It's a wonderful, a wonderful novel about Mia, about a person who is, well, this is my perspective on it, a person who's trying to work out who she is in the world as an individual. Mm -hmm. I mean, how would you describe it? I would describe it as a woman who um, looks like she has her life in order. She oh. has a house, a husband, a stepson, a great dog, a great dog, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's very early for me. <laughs> oh, you think this is early? We've been here for two hours. <laughs> a great job. <laughs> and um, But she's escaping a life of chaos, which is her past. Mm. And so she does these things to keep everything, you know, on check. And bit by bit over the course of the novel, all those things slip away and she returns to a state of chaos. And as she puts her life back together again, she realises that she was living the life that she was supposed to be living as opposed to the life that she wanted to be living. So, um, as it says on the book, she lands on her feet, but after a pretty spectacular meltdown. Yes, which is very um, dramatic, including a sort of uh, an episode in Selfridges and um, and also a, a moment on the bus where she tries to hug a stranger. I know. <laughs> and she's having a difficult time because, you know, the world around her is, is falling apart. And um, and it, it's uh, it's it's really exciting, I think, to explore what society expects of us because that seems to be a running theme in it. Yes. About like kind of actually, what does society expect a, a person, particularly a, like a lot of pressure on women? So, what does society expect a woman to do with her life? And and Mia feels like she's actually uncovering what that what that is for herself. Exactly. I do think there is um, even still an expectation on women to you know yeah. have have a partner. And have children. Mm. And this is where the whole crazy cat lady stereotype comes from in the terms of, so a woman who hasn't got those things but has a cat is for some reason crazy. Yes. Which I just yeah, think yeah. is the most bizarre yes, thing. That's true, and I'm isn't like, it? why is she crazy for having love in her heart and looking after an animal? And yet You're women right. have been brandished with this crazy cat lady. There's yeah. no such thing as a crazy cat man. No. Um, that's just, oh, isn't he sweet for having a cat? He loves cats. Yeah, yeah that's true, isn't it? It's, it's it's true. Mia, the main character, is, is has a very close bond with her, her cat, Pigeon, um, who she rather would sort of sleep in the bed with than her own partner. Yes. Um, is that something, is that something, is that based on any experience you've had? Well, I love my cat sleeping on the bed with me. And right. I had a Siamese cat called Lilu oh. before I met my husband, Chris, for years. This cat oh. and I were just joined at the hip. We came as a pair. I took her to parties, travelled the world with her. It was ridiculous. Wonderful. But I was just totally devoted to this cat mm. and um i met my husband and he stayed the night and we just you know chatted all night and then um and the next night when he stayed over again oh. she puked on his side of the bed <gasps> and it was the oh. biggest protest puke of all time she knew and what she was doing she knew exactly what she was doing mm. she she'd never been sick on the bed before and it was just oh. very deliberately kind of next to his pillow anyway so we discovered this puke and chris was obviously horrified of course. so the cat goes out the room <clears throat> now I remember lying there thinking, okay, what if this is something that continues? <laughs> what if I, what if this... Where will this end? Well, this man who I really like, what if it's serious, <gasps> yeah, but he won't do? have the cat in the room? So I've held on to that. Luckily, the cat and the husband fell in love with each other and all as well. Oh, that's but good. But Mia's husband doesn't allow the cat in the mm. bedroom. And so for that reason, they're in separate rooms. So she sleeps in one room with the cat. <laughs> he sleeps in his <laughs> it's room. It's unconventional. It's yes. unconventional. But I mean, she thinks that's a good solution, but you kind of mm. see how that's chipping away at their marriage mm. a bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I like, I just like eccentric people you know people who are outside of the norms and I like the fact that well I feel like I'm quite an eccentric person in my ways um, and it's nice to know you don't have to be like whatever normal is but you don't have to be like conforming to exactly. anything exactly I mean Mia was the most fun to write because I pushed the limits on that yeah. I said this is the kind of woman who I don't know if I would necessarily get on with in real life but right. she is um, she is extraordinary people don't quite understand her but I think on the page she's really fun to oh, read oh yeah. yeah I think she's wonderful and a very um, yeah yeah fun she seems fun she's but fun. the sort of person actually I think I would probably really get on with yeah. I know she attends one of the key moments key things she does rather is she attends a, a, a pet grieving um, 
course or class. Oh, a pet bereavement group, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's it. Yes, not pets. <laughs> class, this pet. is how you will bereave <laughs> your pet. <laughs> what are they called? Like group. It's a group, module. A group. <laughs> it's a module at university. <laughs> I recommend it. Very intellectual. Um, and I think it's really, again, it's really sweet to see kind of other eccentric people who are quite different coming together in that way. And it's really, it feels really positive and really loving towards people who who maybe see the world in, in a different way. I know. Well, she so she goes into this pet bereavement group and um, there's just this kind of very bizarre cast of characters who she wouldn't meet in her ordinary life. And that's really about finding your people and finding your community. And yes. the whole problem with Mia at the start, she's surrounded by people, but they're not the right people. And what this yes. pet bereavement group, uh, group does for her is it just... It puts her into another in another world, which she's far more suited to than the the world that she's been trying to be a part of for so um, long. Does that that happen sometimes? Doesn't it in the world? You it know, does. you find your people eventually. You find your people. Another thing that I say in the book, which is, you know, if you sit in a doctor's waiting room, no one makes eye contact with each other. And oh we're all yeah. Kind of repulsed by each other because yes, they're sick, and I don't even want to look at yeah. them. I'm just going to read this old <laughs> copy of Cosmopolitan. <laughs> and, um, but you go into a pet waiting room, and everyone's like, "Oh, is he okay? What's the matter?" Can oh poor baby and everyone's just talking and being so <laughs> lovely I'm like humans are so bad with each other but you put a pet into the situation and this yeah. kind of warmth comes out I think they are actually conduits to do that aren't they they, they sort really of bring are. out our, our, our warmth and our kindness and you've, we invest a lot of love in them it's sort of they're almost a holding a holding device for all our love we project families project all their love on the, the, the pets I think a lot of the time so much so my single life before I met Chris that cat was like I projected <laughs> a lot onto that cat <laughs> she was very important to me <laughs> But as well, I suppose, I mean, I know people have been in touch with you to say, well, I like this book if I don't like cats. Uh, and I know you feel very strongly about that. I do. My answer is, um, do you have to like spiders to watch Spider-Man? Uh, uh, no. No. No, if so anything. No. No. It's not, the book isn't about cats. It's about a woman who has a cat. Okay. Um, so for all the cat haters out there, you will also enjoy the story of Mia. OK. And you are doing some live events to talk about the book as well, aren't you, Dawn? I'm doing... I'm at Piccadilly, uh, Waterstones Piccadilly later oh, on. Oh, that's a lovely bookshop. And, and then I have a lovely dinner with my um, with my team. We call oh. them the team. It's a nice little publication dinner. Oh, great. And it'll feel like the by then the kind of pressure's off a bit so I can yeah. really just enjoy that food and wine. Because it's an intense experience writing, isn't it? Like writing a... It's, a any yes, well, you know, and it's also very solitary. So this, I'm alone yes. a lot. My entire job involves me being alone, apart from yeah. about 10 days a year where I'm out doing this. Right. And so I love it so much oh, because brilliant. I actually get to talk to people rather than just sitting on yeah. my own. Um, and so, but it's this week has been, I do, my, my voice is about three octaves lower than it usually is because I just have been talking solidly oh, for about five days. I know, it's intense, days. isn't it, the way, and, and often it's people like me going, tell us what your book's about. I love it, it's so love nice. It. <laughs> I, you know, I feel so lucky that I'm in a position where people are willing to have me on their shows and talk oh. about the book. It's lovely. Well, I'm very we, grateful. No, we're very grateful to you came in to see us. We love it. Um, and you look, I mean, you look incredible, Dawn. The Do outfit I? you're wearing today is so amazing. I know you've got your clothes, your vintage clothing uh, range, Joni Clothing. Yes, well, um, it's inspired by vintage inspired clothing. Inspired by vintage yes. clothing, sorry, sorry. Yes, so um, we make really, um, with all sustainable fabrics. Yes. And we make really cute vintage inspired clothes and they're adorable and you can find them at journeyclothing.com. Thank you for you're letting welcome, me plug everybody. that. My pleasure, my pleasure. <laughs> um, I, but no, to go back to talking about the book and writing, it is very solitary, isn't it? I found that. I wrote a book during the lockdown and I found that much more straightforward because, of course, we couldn't go anywhere. So it was perfect. Yeah. But then writing a book this year, it's so hard because, you, you know, we're, we're all out and about. Did you find that difficult? Um. No, I didn't because because I live in LA. I have this oh. really. It's, my writing day is really good because I wake up to an inbox full of emails and everyone needs answers from me immediately uh, yeah. here in the UK. But all my work is here, but I live there. So oh. by like ten in the morning, everyone's gone home and no one wants anything to do with me. So I get this full mm. writing day where I'm kind of got nowhere to be and nothing to do. So I it, it works really really well. What a great idea! Yeah, it's and, good. And I feel like LA is a fun place to be creative and write and stuff. It's really lovely to be surrounded by creative people yeah like, and everyone you meet is pretty kind of industry based over there so you know this kind of what are you working on question and it's just really nice to say what you're working on and then yeah. they're saying I'm writing this and I'm writing that it's it's quite inspiring because I think a lot of people assume and I did I've only been to LA a few times but when I went there I assumed that everyone would be quite vapid and like well, can you help me get into the movies but actually I didn't find that I found people were really supportive and it was quite um yeah quite, quite creative I'm sure that absolutely exists but that also exists 
everywhere. Yeah, and I yeah, think it's who, sure. you know, who you, I've been there for 15 years. Really? Yeah, so I'm not hanging out with people, but I'm hanging out with my friends, mostly school mums, to be honest with you. Perfect. <laughs> so that's kind of where I've landed. Yeah, nice. But um, no, my, my experience of LA is um, not the kind of the stereotype that people think it is. It's, okay. it's just, it's lovely. And it's a nice city. It is a nice city and you're by the sea yes. and you can get down there. And the sun is shining. The sun is shining. Do you have a special riding space that you go to? So I, I don't know why I feel like I need to do that Californian accent. That's, like, that's where okay. do you ride? Where do you um, ride, Don? I write in the spare room. Oh. We moved into our house in 2020 and the spare room had this huge closet and I just, it's in like a little cubby. Oh. And I was like, what if we just take away the closet and stick a desk there? Oh, great. So I have this little kind of nook a in the spare nook. room and it's like, it's, it's the it, yeah, I love it. I go in there and it's just my zone oh so that's it's quite nice. small it's like being in a wardrobe but it's it's yeah it's cute do you sometimes fall into narnia <laughs> yeah, <a little> bit. <laughs> some of you call it a closet that's 15 years in la yeah. cupboard do you mean a cupboard do you write well, a cupboard door i do go in the cupboard and create oh. worlds so uh, i suppose it is a bit you like, are narnia. like them aren't you pushing yeah. those coats aside going to mr tumnus um but you don't have a view of like the ocean or anything like that that's what i imagined you'd no, have no i live an hour away from the beach uh yeah okay but i um and I actually have a tiny window in there. I actually quite like the kind of um, den uh, type yeah. office vibe. My husband needs, you know, daylight and brightness and big windows. And I actually like going into a bit of a cave. A bit of a cozy space. Yeah. yeah, I can imagine that actually. Yeah, and that's nice, isn't it? In a world full of distractions and social media and what have you, it feels like it's all the more important to... Um, you know, kind of isolate ourselves yeah, sometimes I and know. just kind of concentrate on one well, thing. Well, we need some more isolation. Yeah, basically, I mean, yeah, I mean, there were there were creative parts to that time of lockdown, actually. Yeah, I think, but for it lots is of people. it's really important when you're a writer that you have your spot. You yeah, need, you need. I'm not one of those people who can kind of hot desk all over the place. I need like my my spot. I've got the cats are asleep on the bed. There's a dog oh. asleep at my feet. Oh. I've got my bowl of crisps to my left and a <laughs> steaming cup of builder's tea to my right. <laughs> And that's me just getting into my zone and I need all of those things and I need to know they're going to be there and that's when I do my best work. Oh, that's lovely, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, there were a few times when I had to write when I was kind of on trains and things and it's sort of not quite the same because you're like, you know, got tickets, please. I know. Like, oh, I so sorry, I was writing this. Bit. I know. And I used to think that train journeys were amazing for writing and I think they used to be. And so I experimented with that when I went to Edinburgh a few years oh, ago and I was yeah. like, right, I'm going to write all the way up on the train. And I was like, oh my God, I feel so, I'm so sick. <laughs> just got really, really sick. Those and bendy then, trains yeah, as well. And then I find out that new high speed train that goes up is known as the Vomit Comet because <laughs> it's so quick. And there's me like thinking, oh my Whoa. God, this is so horrific. It's a, a huge, a wonderful book and it Thank deserves so all the much. celebration possible. Um, Dawn, it's been wonderful to chat to you. Thanks so much for coming in. Cat Lady by Dawn O'Porter is out today. It's absolutely phenomenal.